La précision, son pied droit, bien sûr, son courage, bien entendu, ses coups francs, son énergie, son travail, <rire> ses cheveux, son histoire. Before the designer brands and the billboards, before the beards and flashy tattoos, David Beckham, despite how the millennials feel about him, was a professional football player and a damn good one at that. Beckham strikes. That's all I ever wanted to do. I never thought of playing for anyone else or doing anything else. Second Sullivan off his line! Oh! That is absolutely phenomenal! David Beckham, surely an England player of the future, scores a goal that will be talked about and replayed for years. Welcome back to How Good. The series where we scrutinize the greatest footballers across the globe, past and present, to try and accurately rank the true greats against one another with the concept of a prime performance card. Maradona, Maradona, Maradona. Pelé has been the most grand. They are a normal player. Today's video will feature the legendary Manchester United treble winner David Beckham, a man credited with having one of the sweetest right foots in football history. But how will his skill set match up with other attacking midfielders from the past? Be sure to subscribe to our brand new channel to find out, as we've got big plans to delve through the rich history of football over the next few years to put a comprehensive ranking system together. Without any further ado, how good was David Beckham in his prime? Now we're going to watch something special. <laughs> Why are you special in the sports world? Well, I won the bob chart in soccer school. Come finals, skills finals. Whoa. David Beckham grew up in London, England as a standout football player at Chingford County High School. His parents, Sandra and Ted, were diehard Manchester United fans, of which the knowledge and passion was passed down to a pre-adolescent David who was said to already know more about the history of Manchester United than any of the current stars for the team. It was a weird experience for us local lads to see, you know, Cockney lad knowing more about United than we did. <laughs> Bit embarrassing. Legendary coach Sir Alex Ferguson started paying close attention to David's skill set at a very early age, despite the protege playing more than 200 miles south of Manchester. But despite popular belief, it was indeed Tottenham Hotspur that gifted Beckham his first shot in the big leagues, and he became the under 15s player of the season in 1990. He could knock the ball in from a goal line to the middle of the goal without any effort at all, just sheer timing. He had the ability to, 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 to strike the ball perfectly. Following his successive season with Brimsden Rovers in 1990, Sir Alex wasted no more time in offering the now 16-year-old maestro a youth contract with, at the time, one of the best teams in world football. We're going to meet one 14-year-old boy who has just signed for Manchester United. But the question is, can he handle the fame? David shined in a team that was packed with future superstars. His sublime dribbling, passing, and shooting ability led his team to win the FA Youth Cup in 1992. Two years later, he made his first full debut for the main team, impressing to the point of Fergie slotting the youngster in the Champions League squad later that year when he went on to have an outstanding debut, scoring and creating two goals in a 4-0 victory over Galatasaray. And the right key. And out on the right here is Beckham. There's his good curly cross going in. August 17, 1996, it was the first game of the season, and with David's excellent performance in recent years, he had now become a regular feature in the Manchester United first team. At this point, he was viewed as one of the brightest prospects in world football, but it took only 90 minutes for his life to change forever. From potential football star to global icon with just one kick of the ball. And Beckham saw Sullivan off his line! Oh! That is absolutely phenomenal! What an astonishing goal by David Beckham! The 
96-97 season was really the rise of Bex, not only in his personal life, but for the great player we know him as today. Beckham was never quite a goal machine, so to speak, but every time he scored, he made sure it was worth remembering. Ah! Oh, it was also around the time where his passing started to reach its peak. One of the best in the world, and in my opinion, one of the greatest of all time. Just look at this spectacular pass to Andy Cole in the FA Cup against Liverpool. He's unattainable. His pass is unstoppable. Look at this, how far away he gets it. He also provided the quarter that led to the famous volley for Cantona. Five behind. James gets there just for us. Cantona! The treble is without a doubt the greatest honor that any club team in the world could ever earn. In English football, it consists of winning three major trophies in a single season. The FA Cup, a knockout tournament that every single professional club in England has a chance to enter. The Premier League, 38 matches against the best teams in England in what is quite frankly the best and most competitive league in the world. Then to top it off, the Champions League, a group and knockout tournament against the titans of European football the greatest trophy a club team can win. Even if it's my first Champions League or second, I will be motivated because it's the, the most important trophy in terms of club. Has to be a Beckham special. Can he dip it? Drops it in! Yes, he has! Beckham kicked off the campaign with another signature free kick to nick Manchester United a point against Leicester. But overall, the season started fairly poorly. Tries his luck. Oh, and Schmeichel has virtually thrown it into his own net. Legendary keeper Peter Schmeichel had been in a horrible dip of form and announced he'd be leaving the club at the end of the season. United were trailing behind in the league, but with the winner signing of Dwight York, the tide started to turn. And Dwight York, no flag. Beckham had a great relationship with the strikers and contributed 18 assists throughout the season, a record high for Beckham at Manchester United. But the usual brilliance from Beckham, judged perfectly to an inch. Beckham's ball. Beckham has a look. What's he got in his viewfinder? He has Andy Cole. He practiced that in training every single day. Every single day do that. Well, for what he describes as the match, which will put the winner in pole position in the race. Now, to try and sum up the rivalry of Arsenal and Manchester United in the 99 season, you'd have to compare it to Man City and Liverpool in the current landscape in terms of class, and Villa versus Birmingham in terms of fierceness. I can't think of any other word that springs to mind when I was getting ready to go to battle with Arsenal. Absolutely. Hatred was the word. All Manchester United had to do was beat Tottenham on the last game of the season to win the league. Could there have been a better time for Bex to work his magic? Wide for Beckham, a real chance here for Manchester United, and David Beckham has got the equaliser! 1-1, and the whistle goes, and Manchester United are the champions of England again! United thumped Arsenal to win the league by one point, with a very dangerous and underrated Chelsea side finishing four points adrift. United's FA Cup run that year was far from plain sailing. Tough battles over Liverpool and Chelsea led them to a front showdown with better rivals Arsenal in the semi-finals. As great as the goal was, it was sadly overshadowed by the unforgettable Ryan Giggs solo effort to clinch the extra time winner. The final was less climatic as Paul Scholes and Teddy Sheringham had the game wrapped up in under an hour. With two trophies confirmed in their cabinet, there was only one more to grab. When Manchester United drew both Barcelona and Bayern Munich in the same group, the chances of them making it to the knockout round looked slim, let alone winning the whole thing. Beckham's cross.
The two 3-3 draws with Barcelona were without a doubt the major highlights, with Beckham playing out of his skin in both legs, culminating an array of great assists and jaw-dropping goals. It's Beckham. It's David was often overlooked for his incredible work rate during this period. He ran for every ball, played a part in every attack and defensive situation, and contributed massively to United not only making it through the group, but beating Titans in Inter Milan and Juventus to make it to the final, getting one over on his own personal rival Diego Simeone along the way. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of hype before the game and, you know, after the World Cup, but it's all in the past now. What a night for David Beckham. And what we believe is his preferred role, the heart of the midfield. It's the chance of a lifetime. To sum up the final in three words, an absolute battering. Munich were 1 0 up and could have made it 4 or 5 if Fortune favored them rather than the Reds. They hit the woodwork twice and dominated both possession and play. The header, with the overhead, hit the crossbar. Twice the woodwork has saved Manchester United. As the 90th minute approached, the game seemed done and dusted, but the football gods weren't finished with United's season just yet. Beckham, in towards Michael, it's come for Dwight York. Clear, Geeks with a shot, Jerry Young! Beckham's corner played pinball and fell to Teddy Sheringham to make it one all. As the fans were cheering emphatically, they almost seemed to forget there was still a couple of minutes of stoppage time left to play. are the champions of Europe again and nobody will ever win a European Cup final more dramatically than this. For what it was, you have to call the final an injustice considering Bayern played him off the pitch for 90 minutes. But this is football and all it takes is a couple of moments of magic to change the game. I can't believe that. I can't believe that. Football, by the hell. In what many people felt was harsh, Beckham finished a runner-up for the 1999 Ballon d'Or. Rivaldo was a special player, but with Beckham contributing so heavily in the three major trophies for United, it's easy to understand the frustration. Beckham pushed on regardless, improving season after season, scoring and contributing to more goals as time progressed, with his signature free kicks grabbing headlines around the world. Magical. This one drops oh, in. Are you forget kidding me? It. It's ecstasy. Astonishing. This is not just a dream, it's a wet dream. I think it's a common misconception that Real Madrid only signed Beckham for glamour and financial reasons. Yes, it's true that bringing in one of the most famous celebs in the world will only make your club more valuable, but you only have to ask Ronaldo and Zidane just how much of an influence he had on the football team. Beckham's first season at Madrid was a memorable one, but it's clear at this point he was starting to decline as a player. I think the lack of pace led to a lot of frustration, and inevitably a lot of red cards. So for me, Beckham's prime was from roughly 1996 to 2004. Here are his overall stats from club and country between this time. When it comes to the ranking system, it's always going to be hard to compare players from different positions to one another, so Becks will only compete against other attacking midfielders, i.e. center, attacking center, and left and right mids, because he was not a winger. For me, it's going to be a solid 90 out of 100, with his passing, dribbling, and shooting combined ranking amongst the very best that ever did it. Thanks for watching. This video took a lot of time to research and edit. We're only a small channel, so leaving a thumbs up will do wonders for us moving forward. Be sure to subscribe if you're new and drop a comment below on a player documentary you'd like to see next. Until next time, this is the GOAT, signing off.